Good afternoon. I'm Sala Sander and you are watching League TV, a service of the League of Women Voters of Sheboygan County. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan grassroots political organization established in 1920 that advocates for informed and active participation in government. Our members are women and men who work to improve our systems of government and impact public policies through education and advocacy. The League neither supports nor opposes candidates for office at any level of government. Today, we are interviewing Christopher Domogalski, a candidate for a position on the Sheboygan Area School District Board of Education. Chris, before we begin the interview, we want to thank you for agreeing to meet with us today and also for investing your time and resources in running for office. Thank you, my pleasure, happy to be here. Thank you. Well, the, let's begin. The first question is referring to your qualifications. So what skills would you bring to the Sheboygan Area School District? Uh, sure, so I'm the father of five children, um, four of which have gone through the school district. So I'm familiar with the school district um, from that. I'm a community leader. Um, I've been in law enforcement for the past 29 years. And from that, I believe I have a, a unique experience regarding many of the challenges that we face as a community and also many of the solutions. Um, so I work in not only the criminal justice system, but that system is part of a bigger system. And so I have a good understanding of the systems in the both city, county and the state, and even on a federal level and how they intersect um, and how to get those different systems to work together. Um, I have a vast volunteer ex um, experience both with um, Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Um, I sit on the boards of several nonprofits. I sit on some governmental boards. So I have board experience and working um, in that way. And Thanks. also, I also, one last thing, I also have experience a, as an advocate. So I'm a member of Fight Crimes Invest in Kids, which is part of um, this, the Partnership for a Stronger America. Um, and so we advocate for increased funding at the state and federal level for early childhood education. Uh, what do you think the school district should do to improve equity in education? I think the school district constantly, A, needs to listen to find out what, what those we deliver services and their families, what they believe that we need to do um, to provide greater opportunities and to allow them um, access to the opportunities that are there. I think the school district, like most other organizations, needs to be intentional about the things that they, that they do. So when they identify that there's an issue or a shortcoming or a potential problem, that, that they take intentional steps to try to correct it or provide the greatest opportunity. Um, and I think, you know, just uh, on a, really on the grand level, what we all need to do is, is look at each other as people, look at people as people and not objects. Um, and really get to know each other and listen so we can understand where the other person's coming from. How should the school board inform their decisions to best deal with COVID-19 going forward? So I think they have to keep doing what, what they've been doing. Um, but, but I think at, to, to a large degree, one of the things that we're hearing is um, a lot of parents and people in the community don't feel that they're getting the information and don't feel that all the time that that they're getting it fast enough. And I recognize that, that that's a huge challenge for the, for the district. Um, not only does the administration have to take feedback from the board on the things that, that the direction they should be going in, but then they need to develop the plan. They need to share that plan with all of the staff, um, get input from, from them on things that maybe they didn't think of or other areas that they could do better. So communicate it internally, communicate it back to the board, and then communicate it out, out to the community. Um, and, you know, I think for the most part, they've tried to do a very good job also, you know, at the board board meetings by, by making sure there is that public comment time and taking all the time that's really needed to hear and get that feedback from the community. With uh, regards to recruitment and retaining of staff, what do you re recommend the district should do to attract and retain quality staff? So I think that the district already has done many of those things with having um, attractive benefits. Um, I believe they're on that pathway to do that, it, but is really is develop 
and try to retain those that are going through the, through the school district. It's one of the things that we've tried to do um, in the police department by building a pathway through South High School and having programming that starts really um, in the middle schools and up. So identifying those that are interested in teaching and getting them connected to the, to the district so that they wanna stay in the district once they become educated and then build those partnerships with the technical colleges and university to provide greater opportunities for those students that are interested in teaching to get the certifications and degrees that they need. Um, and for those that that might be challenging for, make sure that we build the support systems, um, scholarships and those kinds of things to make sure that, that that happens. What do you see as the most important role of the school board and why? Uh, so, the, so the school board has many roles. The, the most important role is really is what I would call alignment. So it's, it's understanding what the community wants and being aligned with the community. So being open to get that feedback so we understand what the wants and needs of the community are and then building that alignment with um, the administrative staff and the, the, the bottom line staff. So the teachers and everybody, all the support people. Um, so creating that alignment all the way through the entire district is really a, a very important role. Thank you. This final question is a little long. Uh, since 2017, Wisconsin statute requires graduating high school students to take a civics test comprised of the same 100 questions that may be asked of an individual applying for US citizenship. Students must correctly answer 65 of those questions. In non-presidential election years, spring voter turnout in the city and county has been between 20 and 40%, even though this election determines who runs local government and the Board of Education. And much has been written lately about US citizens' general lack of knowledge about the constitution, the election system, and the critical role of compromise in a democracy. Do you think the current civics education offered in the district goes far enough to educate and engage young citizens in the democratic process? So difficult, again, difficult question to, to answer um, because so much of it is personal, I think. You know, those that really do well on the civics test are those that are really interested in it. And so um, with all of the competing interests that we have nowadays and how divided we are, to some degree that I think has raised the attention on it. But in my work, I see really part of the same thing is because of, of the speed that society moves in and how mobile people are and just how busy people are, um, we've lost a lot of that sense of community. Um, and so that sense and, and understanding that in order for us to be successful as a community, as a city, as a school district, we really need to be involved and in, in to make good decisions. We need to, to understand and know the facts and the reasons that things are done. And so I think continued really, I, I believe that, that the basics are there for, for kids to do well on that test and to be informed, but really engagement and get, get, get kids connected with the change that they can create and how their involvement at the local level really can impact their life and the community and, and build this inclusive um, community where everybody's connected and, and successful because of those connections. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris, for taking the time to interview with us today. The League of Women Voters strongly encourages all who are eligible to vote in the upcoming general election on April, April 6th. If you are one of the 20,000 eligible citizens in our county not registered to vote, you may sign up easily on myvote.wi.gov, or you may contact your municipal clerk for more information. Other League TV interviews may be found on our website, including our conversations with five of the candidates for the school board. Chris, thank you again for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Sala, for both, both your time and your effort to really help educate the voters about those of us that are running.